She's coming. 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 So we're being evaluated? Yeah. Right. We should hand that over. You all have an evaluation <laughs> form. <laughs> you have to let us know if we're doing Thumbs a good job. Thumbs up or down. Thumbs up or down. Give them the agreement for the teachers, which is 2.6%, and for the other two personnel, it would be the same as the ESP, which is 3.5%. That would be my recommendation. Anybody yeah. have any? Should, we, should, we have should a I make a, I make a motion to accept Bill's recommendation? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion of Bill's recommendation? Is, is <laughs> it, was that a similar recommendation in the other districts? Well, this is the first time I've made it, so far we're making it from tonight. But to the, the assumption is that we're going pretty much in that area. Dangerous. Okay. Yeah. That, I mean, the other two personnel that are covered do supervise ESP, and it's appropriate for them to get the same. Mm -hmm. Raise the mm -hmm. folks they supervise, and that's true for Alicia as well. Are you okay with that? Yeah. <laughs> Further discussion? All of those in favor of approving salary increase for non bargaining employees, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Folks, I'm really sorry I'm not staying. <laughs> Somebody's taking his place, though, and she will be a great audience. <laughs> yeah. yes. I'm wondering for um, the students if you could introduce yourselves, and maybe they could. They're going to introduce themselves when they come up, each of them. But do you want to let the students know who you all are? Sure. We could do that. Sure. Hi, I'm Floor. I'm Lincoln's mom. <laughs> I'm Lindy, and my kids finished here a bit ago, and I taught <laughs> here for a while. Now I'm on the board. I'm Ruben. I'm Lacey's dad. She's in first grade. And I'm the dad of Kaylin, who's in 10th grade, and Justin, who is an early college senior. And I'm Steve, and my son Steve's a senior at U32 right now. I'm Jen. I'm the curriculum director for the supervisory union. I'm also a parent, so I have a seventh grader and a ninth grader at E32. And you all know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before we have you come up, because I know you have a lot to share with us, and I want to make sure we get to that really quickly. But before we do that, just to share with the board, so you each have a little packet. How many, are there four presentations or three? Four. Four. So I gave you enough to for each of the presentations because they're all a little bit different. But just a couple of things to know <coughs> when the students come up. 
Um, this afternoon, hot off the press, if you look at the back, this is a new document that is, um, it just kind of explains really briefly what each of those are, just to help you. And really, you're not looking for whether or not the students learned um, an SLO, but whether or not they had the opportunity. So you're not evaluating their learning um, or their speaking or mm -hmm. any of that, but it's really, did it, was the opportunity there for one of the um, student learning outcomes or transferable skills? Anything you want to add to that? No, I think that's good. Okay, are we ready? Should we turn can, to face... Can I just do yes. like a two-minute introduction? Yes. Should we turn to face this way? I now? think that I will have them go stand up there because they're going to have a lot of presentations, and I'll come up here because I realized that my computer just went to sleep and I can't get into it. But I wanted to start by saying thank you for um, giving us the opportunity to come, and I wanted to let you know a little bit of background when Alicia put out to the staff... Um, was anyone interested, I decided to present it to the students, see if the students were interested. And I immediately had, as you can see, I have, I believe, 15 arrived tonight. We've got one that we're still waiting for, we may have to fill in for. And there were probably three to four that had prior commitments that they could not get out of. Um, so I am really, really proud that they wanted to come, they wanted to share, although a couple of them at the last minute said, you didn't tell us we were being videotaped. <laughs> um, but um, it has been their presentation from the beginning. Um, I said to Alicia that this will be representing the four presentations. They're not just representing my classroom. You will see a representation, well actually two, of integration with Arlen and technology class, you will see an integration with the art teacher and technology in a presentation. And you will see a little bit of what's been happening in the last 12 weeks in reteach in my room. I have 24 students and we're doing something very different where we're focusing on transferable skills through a, a individual learning of choice. They had to do, create a contract with me. They'll tell you about that, so I don't want to take that away from them. But you'll see a wide variety of projects. And I just want to say I'm really proud of each and every one of these kids, as well as all the rest that couldn't make it here, because they've worked so hard. They took this so seriously. They wrote their scripts. I told them that was fine. They could have it in front of them. And so I hope you enjoy. So the first one, you guys can come up front while I'm trying to get this ready. I had to move down so I could sit around yeah. Steven, yeah. but now I have to have this into I'm just getting a new Dell combination laptop notebook kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. new techniques. Some of them were sponging is, is when you use a sponge to dab on the paper. Tempera paint is white paint usually used to smell. And crayon rummings are when you rub crayon on your artwork to make it look cool. We also learn lots of types of poetry. Some of them are some of them are list, haiku, tonka, sinkane, and acrostic. All of these types are written differently. For example, a haiku is is a three-line form of poetry. The first line has five syllables, the second line has seven syllables, and the last line has five. We use student learning outcomes when we are making poetry in watercolors. We use artistic expression when we are making watercolors. We use literacy when we are writing a poetry when we add figurative, figurative language or onomatopoeia. This year we participate in Poem City. Poem City is a month-long poetry festival when everyone from Vermont who wants to, ages 2 to 95, creates a poem and gives it to Kellogg Cover. And they put them up in the windows of stores around Montpelier. There are over 500 poems in total, and some of them are even put up in the Adamant Co-op. 
There are three poems from our class in the window of Woodbury Mountain Toys, while the rest were put in the haze from that Cowell cupboard. Our, po our poems were put into the Poem City Easter egg hunt. Lots of people could find them because they were hidden inside a plastic egg. <clears throat> the Easter egg hunt took place on April 1st and lasted until the end of that day. A connection from a classmate said that someone found his poem in an Easter egg that nobody found. So that person, a East Montpelier resident and grandmother of a pre-K student, sent, a, sent the classmate a letter and said that they found his poem. The student also received a poem. Thank, Thank you all for, for listening to our presentation. We hope that you enjoyed it. We would like to invite you to look at some examples of different types of poetry done by our class at the end of the other presentations. Thank you. sources in the video. After those steps, we posted our videos in Google Classroom, and we commented on each other's video videos there. Google Classroom is a place where you can post projects, texts, or responses to other classmates' projects. Your peers give feedback and comments about your post. We each have a different artist that we will be teaching you about that have unique art styles. We hope you learn about them by watching our videos. Enjoy.
Yeah, just leave this. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Open. technology, global citizenship, and transferable skills. Both 5-6 classes made our infographics and in technology and regular plastic. An infographic is a way to show information by using pictures and graphics and not using as many words. Our infographics were about famous explorers, but we could do that on ships or any other thing that was connected to early exploration. Some things that we did our infographics on. I did Magellan versus Drake, a kid in our class did Caribou versus Carac, and Aaron did Christopher Columbus. We did our infographics on a website called Canva and then printed them out. The reason that we did our did the infographic on early exploration ex, early exploration is because we did, were in a unit about early exploration. There was a process to our work. First we learned what an infographic was. Then we made up all three questions on early exploration that we wanted to research. Some examples were comparing two explorers, comparing a caravel to a cara, who circumnavigated the world faster, number of ships sailed with, and who traveled further. The next step we did was that we had to research our questions. For instance, if you did who circumnavigated the world faster, you would look up your explorer and then look up the other explorer. Then you would research about who circumnavigated the world faster. Then after we researched our question, Ms. Song showed us how to get to Canva and try a tutorial. After that, we started working on our infographics in Canva. The last step was we got a three-fold board and put our infographic on it, along with some other uh, some other things that we did while we were learning about early exploration. Thank you for thank you for listening to our talk on five six infographics. If you look over there, you will see some examples from su some students' infographics. <laughs> we asked them to evaluate us too, so you're in trouble. They might like my life. Hello, we are students from Mrs. Shedd and Ms. Gallagher's fifth and sixth grade classes. We will be showing you what we have done and reteach with Mrs. Shedd during the last unit. This is Lincoln, that's Paige, Isaac, Ryan, Kristen, um, Yvette, and Sayla. I am Aurelia. We are all part of the reteach group. I hope you enjoy, enjoy our presentation. One thing we focused on during reteach is transferable skills. This project also included student learning outcomes in the academic, academic areas of reading, writing, science, and global citizenship. In the beginning of the unit, we filled out a contract which helped us plan for a project and helped us budget time, which is a transferable skill. Our contract included three essential questions we had about our topic. We each had the opportunity to choose a topic that inter interested us. For example, I chose to research dyslexia. We spent the first couple of classes researching and taking notes. Soon it was time to start. Some people chose to use Google Slides, Canva, poster boards, or any other creative uh, ideas to present our their projects. This, this people will share our projects with the whole group, show, showing what we have learned about our topic. And this is my presentation. Dyslexia. What is dyslexia? Dyslexia is a reading disability. Some kids who get dyslexia will only have a small case, but others may have a bigger case. If you have dyslexia, you have a harder time learning how to read and write. The brain. The brain has two sides. One side, the left side, is for reading, writing, language, logic, and math. The right side of the brain is for creativity, music, and art. 
people with dyslexia want to use the right side of their brain more for, than the left. That makes it harder and take longer to read and write. <coughs> Challenges for children with dyslexia. For children with dys dyslexia, reading, writing, and spelling are hard. Children with dyslexia may fall behind from other children in their grade. Then they may feel socially insecure and feel bad about themselves. Examples of reading from kids with dyslexia. In this picture, you see that there is a piece of paper. If you look at the piece of paper, you will see that it looks normal. Then if you look at the circle, you will see that there are a bunch of letters. That is what dyslexic children see when they are reading. Reading for kids with dyslexia. They have a hard time reading because of how their brain works. Kids with dyslexia see things the same as people without. It's just how they process the letters. Spelling for kids with dyslexia. Spelling is hard for children with dyslexia. They may spell things the way they sound, not the way they are. So they, for example, some may spell, some children with dyslexia may spell friends as friends. Kids with dyslexia can mature, their, without dyslexia, can mature their spelling skills faster than kids with dyslexia. Writing for kids with dyslexia. Mm -hmm. For children with dyslexia, writing is hard. Part of this is because spelling is hard for them. Also, you can find that in dyslexic children, they will use run-on sentences. They will use run -on sentences. How dyslexia can affect children emotionally. A child with dyslexia may have a hard time understanding a joke, social cues, and they may remember things the wrong way. Quotes. I think everything about my life is a miracle. I have struggled, and against most odds, I am truly having the experience of living in my dreams. Bella Thorne. Conclusion. I hope after you saw this presentation that you know more about dyslexia than you did before. And the rest of the slides are just um, uh, sources. My presentation is about bluegrass music. Um, I hope you enjoy my presentation. Oh, oopsies. Music by Isaac. Rush the words are just um, the names of the instruments. So there's a washboard, a dobro, a banjo, a guitar, a mandolin, a bass, and a fiddle. What is bluegrass? Bluegrass music is a style that is made of folk, country, rock, soul, trap, western swing, reggae, and gospel. It's okay if you don't know what it is because it's not that popular. It started in the Midwest or Appalachian Mountains and grew and wax in popularity and wane. Background to Bill Monroe, who is one of the fathers of bluegrass. And the rest just says, try to find um, a hidden mandolin in every slide, but you, you, we shouldn't do that because it's for if you're looking at it on the computer. Bluegrass instruments. Here's some lists of the usual bluegrass band. If they play more gospel, then they would probably have a guitar player and three people singing. If they do old time, they would have a fiddle, two people singing, a mandolin, a bass, a banjo, and a guitar. In new grass, they would use instruments that are more like rock, like electric bass guitar, mandolin, electric banjo, drums, guitar, fiddle, and dobro. How bluegrass instruments are tuned usually. A guitar is tuned E, A, D, G, D, E. A fiddle is tuned G, D, A, E. A mandolin is tuned G, G, D, G, A, A, E, E. A banjo is tuned G, D, G, B, D, and a dobro is um, tuned G, D, D, G, B, D, and a bass is tuned E, A, D, G. G. Oh, all right, here we go. Bluegrass bands. This one I'm not going to read because it's way too long, and it's just a list of all the bands I know, including my band, which is um, uh, we play bluegrass. Bluegrass. <laughs> if you'd like to listen to some bluegrass and not drive a thousand miles, 
We have bluegrass right here in Vermont. A local bluegrass band is Two Cents in the Till. I've seen them live. This is a band, um, that's Two Cents in the Till, in the bottom right hand corner. And the background is um, a band, a bluegrass band called The House Band with Stuart Duncan, Dale Fleck on the banjo, Edgar Meyer on the bass, Sam Bush on the mandolin, and Jerry Douglas on the dobro, and Brian Sutton on the guitar. That's bluegrass moments. This is basically just um, all the people I've seen, and um, likes to keep you going. If you'd like to go to the Great Fox Bluegrass Festival, um, you can click right on there. And if you'd like to learn more about bluegrass, you can. Um, there's some stuff on. Uh, I think it's World Book. Um, and if you'd like to go to the Falcon Ridge Folk and Bluegrass Festival, there's a link for that. In case you want to buy instruments, um, it, it'll it'll get you to um, some places. And if you'd like to go to tell your at Bluegrass Festival, you can um, see the, their website there. And if you um, want an audio sample of what a mandolin sounds like, you can um, get um, a mandolin. You just look up mandolin on YouTube, and it'll give you a CAM 172 audio sample. And if you want to um, get a list of all the bands, you can look up Bluegrass Bands on Google. These are mandolin boards, guitar boards, banjo finger positions, and reliable instrument brands. So um, there's Eastman, which I own, I have a mandolin. Um, and down there, there's Eastman on mandolin. And there's Luna, which I own, they make guitars. And um, my friend owns a Weber mandolin. Um, another friend owns an Ibanez. And Gold Tone is a good banjo company. And for bass and fiddle, I'm not sure you have, how you pronounce it, but I think it's a Cicillo. And um, this is just about me. I was three days away from being 11 years old, but that was a while ago, so I'm actually 11 now. <laughs> this is East Montpelier with his mom, dad, and his two dogs, Martha and Abigail. He loves lots of kinds of music and has three string instruments, soon to be four, hopefully. <laughs> he plays baseball and skis. He is he has had lots of fun making this project. He was born in Almaty, Kazakhstan, in Central Asia. Isaac would love if he came down to State Street, Montpelier, and listened to his band play some tunes. These are sources. There are way too many. I'm just, yeah, that's it. There's um, 10, 11 or so slides on sources, so. <laughs> also known as chronic traumatic encephalopathy. And I chose this presentation because I always wanted to play football, but when I found out the results of playing football, I decided not to. And the CTE sim symptoms come from like chronic hits to the head over and over and over again. So when you play football in one game, you overcome hundreds, maybe in your career, thousands of hits to the head. And when you keep getting hit, you can get CTE. And symptoms are memory loss, confusion, impaired judgment, impulse control, aggression, depression, anxiety, suicide, Parkinson, and eventually dementia. And I don't know if you guys have heard of Aaron Hernandez, who had CTE and they never seen it before unless it was somebody who was over 46 and he was 27 and he ended up he murdered somebody and then he committed suicide in prison and they think a big reason he did it was because of CTE and this is the improvement in helmets from 1990 to 2016 they started with leather and then went from plastic to more plastic. And then, like around 2015, SG Helmets, which is a company, 
started designing and trying to figure out better ways to not only help skull fractures, but concussions. So the first layer is a load shell. Soft outer layer works like a car bumper, def deforming when struck to absorb the blow. So it's, it flexes with the use of the core layer. Small columns move in every direction to bend with the force reducing linear and rotational impact. So when they get hit, it absorbs some of the impact. So there's not as much brain trauma going directly to the brain. And the hard shell, the hard plastic shell, which is sandwiched between the layers to protect the skull. And the form liner, waterproof textiles and spacious special foams distribute pressure around the head to form a unique hit. So when they get hit, the helmet doesn't move at all, which can help when it stays on the head it absorbs more of the hit. And then the chin strap, which is for if you get hit in the chin or if the face mask goes right into the ground, the face mask doesn't go directly into your face. And then Bill Simpson's goal was to prevent extreme brain damage. You cannot stop concussions completely because you can't keep the brain from bouncing off the skull. So in this moving image, it shows that when you get hit, it your brain bounces off one side and then maybe the other side, but in the brain only moves a millimeter because in between the skull and the brain there's fluid, so it, it only moves just a little bit. And then my opinion, in my opinion, SG helmets are a great start to helping with brain damage in football, but concussions can't be stopped. So if concussions can't be stopped, CTE can't be stopped. In my life, I'll never be playing football because when I'm 40 years old, I want to be mentally and physically functioning. Because there have been cases where people who've played football can't function because their brain just doesn't work. It's pretty much crumbling inside their head. And the concussion problem, we all know concussions is a big problem in football. So, for example, in this moving image, it shows how that guy's helmet goes directly into his helmet. So there's lots of brain trauma. So he probably got pretty serious. And then there's this one, which is actually a penalty. Yeah. So refs have changed the rules to protect players a little more to keep them from dying. And that's it. Thanks. slides so I said you've got to select just a few of your favorites so this is my favorite one and it's actually about Hades and Demeter Hades is the god of the underworld and his symbol is the helm of darkness and he's the son of Kronos and Rhea Demeter is the goddess of agriculture and the harvest and her symbol is the horn of plenty and she is the daughter of Kronos and Rhea <laughs> Demeter and Hades have never gotten along either which I said either because in a past one I was talking about other gods that didn't like each other, but they have very good reason for it, which 
Demeter loved her daughter, Persephone, but little did she know that Hades was planning on kidnapping her for his wife. Hades asked Zeus if he could marry Persephone and how to get her away from Demeter. Zeus, acting quite corrupted, suggested kidnapping her. So that's exactly what Hades did. <coughs> While Demeter and Persephone were playing in the fields, Hades decided to act. When Persephone was off picking flowers away from Demeter, he came in on his chariot and carried away her away to the depths of the underworld. Demeter turned back to find Persephone, but she and Hades were already gone. Demeter hadn't seen Hades take Persephone, so she began to search the earth for her daughter. But she, when she didn't find anything, she grieved and the earth grieved with her. It got cold and plants started dying. Eventually, Demeter went to Zeus and made him get back Persephone. She threatened him that if she didn't get Persephone back, all the plants on earth would die and it wouldn't grow back. When Zeus told her Hades had kidnapped her, she was furious. So of course, Zeus had to send Hermes, the messenger god, to the underworld to get back Persephone. Hermes went to retrieve, Persef retrieve Persephone, but when he got there, he couldn't take her back. Persephone had eaten four pomegranate seeds while she was in the underworld. You see, when one consumes food of the underworld, they have to stay there forever. Demeter once again was mad, but Persephone was going to come back, her back to her. The deal was, Persephone had to stay in the underworld for four months every year because of the four pomegranate seeds she ate. Then she would return to Demeter. In those four months, Demeter would grieve and the earth would grieve with her. No plants would grow. This is most likely how they explained winter. And that is all I have. That's the next slide, but that is the one I'm showing. which is a volcano. Uh, I learned a lot this uh, this entire unit of reteach learning uh, volcanoes and what they do and uh, yeah just studying lots of volcanoes. Uh, so yeah. <clears throat> We would like to thank you for taking this time to listen to our presentations. I think I can speak for all of us. This has been an honor to present and talk in front of you in front of the EMES school board. Please take a few minutes of your time now to take a look at the presentations we have right over there. Right now. <laughs> okay. And we would like you to take a, just a few minutes to just walk over and see a sample of more of the okay, project. We have, we have permission. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
last By the public, end of the season, our public yeah. just left us. It's just us. I know, it's so quiet. <laughs> Come back. Um, I, unless anybody has agenda revisions, I'm going to move us to the consent agenda to approve the minutes of March 28th. Take a motion to okay. approve the minutes of March 28th, 2018. I'll second it. Is there any discussion of the minutes that are presented? Not seeing or hearing any. All of those in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Interesting. Thanks. Uh, student presentation we have done. Um, however, the observation forms we have not. So this is where are we going to talk about? This is where we talk about what we observed and um, all of that. I, I'm going to be the first to admit that I was so engaged watching the presentations that I took really funny notes. <laughs> and honestly, they, they gave, so they worked they, a yeah. long time on this, and they told them exactly what the last yeah. was going to be. So there is no guessing in any of that part. But. But I think with um, a presentation like that that is so encompassing, it's better to watch and pay attention to them than to the paper. I was finding that perhaps if I was just wandering through the school on an open house or looking at artifacts on the hall, but even that I think would be hard to use this. Mm -hmm. um, there's obviously indicators of learning and depending on who was talking about what, where it showed up mm -hmm. was, um, there's no doubt in my mind these children we're learning transferable right. skills and yeah. Uh, content. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. I felt how hard it would be to be observing a teacher. You know, the job that you guys do, you know how hard it is to like, really be paying attention. So I tried at the beginning and then, you know, the other stuff we needed to go see there. But I really, the passion that the kids had and their their self-guidance, they all seem really, regardless of what project mm -hmm. they were doing, they all seem to be so so engaged. So I think it's something that they will remember mm -hmm. for forever and it taught them something. So that was so great to see that energy. To, I think it'd be valuable to, for, and you have open house nights, mm -hmm. but there might be, maybe everybody understands reteach, but I think a lot of people think of it as mm -hmm intervention and help because you're behind or this, but there's such a variety and choice and all of those things. That's what I think was valuable about seeing this. Yeah. Was it's um, the importance of choice in education. And this gave children, there was a way variety and you could see some kids really passionate about a topic and other ones learning they were passionate about a topic. So that was very good. I've done like two, really quickly, like a couple things, and I think for this form to be useful, we would have to have a lot more training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know the intent of evaluating like the outcomes and the transferable skills, but I'm, in particular, I was struck by what Floor said that. I, th I think, I feel like I could better inform in generalities rather than specifics. Mm -hmm. So for, for me to adequately respond to this form, as they were presenting, I would have had to have been flipping, I, I wouldn't have been paying hardly attention to them at all, mm -hmm. as compared to like what Floor took away was energy, and that's not something that gets evaluated. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, we might all have certain biases that we look for, and I don't say that in a bad way, that with multiple perspectives. So I, I'm thinking more of the structure of it. Um, you know, if I was, if it was one class doing one thing, mm -hmm. I might be able to use this, but um, it, it, for me, this is too specific for a board member. I, I'm, you know, maybe if I did this 20 times a year for five years, mm -hmm. 
I would feel good with it. But for me, it's too specific. So, you know, even if it was just, you know, did it, are the students um, in discussing their outcomes or discussing outcomes or something like that? And if you did hear that, what kind of outcomes did you hear? They were very good at talking about their outcomes. <laughs> but that way, it, I can be paying attention, paying attention, outcomes. Okay, they mention, it, they mention these two outcomes, and it looks to me like there's some literacy. And whether it's an actual outcome or not, it's, it's things that I observe. Mm -hmm. So structurally, for me, that would be better. I agree with, particularly what Flores had said. I, I just had, and Ruben, I think, said I had to kind of ignore this, mm -hmm. and I just made general notes on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I, I was struck by the idea, like, we've always had this idea of teaching to the test, and this is maybe the best possible test to teach to. <laughs> right? Like, I, I, knowing what we've talked about, sort of on a high level and from a layperson's perspective, what, what we're sort of aiming at educationally, and then seeing the kids internalize that and be able to, um, to understand what it is that they're actually after was really cool. <clears throat> so I, I Without sounding too fanboyish, <coughs> the I mean, I've been a strong proponent of the student learning outcomes and proficiency-based um, educational stance since I learned that because it just makes sense to me. Um, but hearing it and seeing it in the kids, where they understand what it is that they're supposed to get out of this activity. Um, is exciting for me because it, it, it sort of ticks off what I struggled with as a student and what I have seen generations of other people struggle with, which is the disengagement. Why do I need to know this? Um, and I always go back to my experience with Mr. Barry, the geometry teacher, and you know I, I will never forget because it's cemented in my memory, the day that I was like, 10th grade, why do I need to know how to figure out the hypotenuse of a raptor? I've never going to have to do a raptor. And you know, I think it was 10 years ago, I had to figure out the hypotenuse of a raptor. <laughs> Damn you, Mr. <Mary. laughs> but, you know, that wasn't real to me at that time. And, and what these guys were doing was that it, it mattered to them. And so they were engaged in a way that that geometry class didn't manage to engage me. So. I agree. I, I had a physics in, a teacher in college, instructor in college that it was all about baseball. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this, I can get, I can relate to it. So I think that once you find something that's good to them. Right. But I had a takeaway that is evaluated. I was very impressed by their adaptability, how, how they adjusted on the fly several times. Mm -hmm. um, for it, it, it speaks to me less of a specific incident, but more of an overall experience, educational experience, mm -hmm. that as fifth and sixth graders, they, they weren't flustered because something didn't work or someone wasn't here or they, they could have hmm? created and practical problem solving. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but again, I mean that's board education to know that right. that's where it would fit. Anyway, yeah. I'll be quiet. No, this, so is, I, this is so helpful for yeah. us to hear. So I just I, I did take more specific notes so, so I didn't, you know, I I, I tend to gravitate to the emotional part, right? So the energy and just like the excitement of the kids. So I love that part. I do want to get better. So I don't, you know, I, I feel like we can all get better at this because now I feel like I can be more informed when a parent approaches, 
me and says, you know, whatever. I can say, well, you know, the other day I was at school and I could see that they're doing, you know, there's great content going on in fifth and sixth grade, you know, being, you know, like I did take some more specific notes at the beginning, but then I just wanted to, to, to observe it. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like as a board member, I would like to learn a little bit more about how to be a good observer. <laughs> So we can just mm -hmm. it, it just take a little more time. So maybe like Stephen is saying, to simplify some 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 things, or as it goes, this is our first time, so mm -hmm. we'll get we'll get better at it. But I, I really enjoyed it. So thank you for putting it mm -hmm. together. I no, I know, but See, I just but telling them to come. And the kids yeah. did it all mm -hmm. um, with Ellen's support. But um, another thing that we had talked, and and this was. This was a little tricky because it was very scripted and staged, yeah. and I mean, this was the polished end result. But another thing we had talked about, and I wonder if it would be helpful, and that was recorded, is if you just take it in for the first time and just experience it, and then go back and watch and, and try to fill. Because you can't, even, you know, when we do observations, yeah. we don't capture mm -hmm. everything, you know, in the moment. You can't. Mm -hmm. But I wonder if we were to go back and watch even a piece of it, together and maybe went through some of this and could talk more specific because you've heard it once you've seen it i think that'd be great that might be that might be, that be, that might be really useful yeah. useful research opportunity right? <laughs> <laughs> well and it's one of the things that we've been talking about with this which is the calibration so right. we're looking for the same things yeah and uh, i'll echo uh, no, i think it was just about everybody. everybody but you know having 15, 14 bullet points that I'm trying to mm -hmm. keep in mind while I'm trying to. <laughs> yeah. That multitasking is not my strong suit. Mm -hmm. So, one bullet point, maybe two or three, but <laughs> trying to keep in mind a, a dozen is just. Yeah. I've seen it after my. I sensed, well, I know from two that I saw, but I sensed us writing distracted. The students, mm -hmm. some, um, for some of them, you could see the eyes go over, mm -hmm. and they would say something, and we, someone would write, and so they handled it well. Mm -hmm. But I would hate our, you know, making it like it's a test, yeah. right? No, yeah, no, you no, know, no, yeah. Oh, they fit, you know, they have no idea what we're what writing. writing. Yeah. Um, we could, we could, you know, unintended consequences of mm -hmm. disrupting their flow because they're. Mm -hmm. They handled it very well. But it's quantum learn just by observing it for messing it up. So would it be helpful if I took like a, a snippet of it and we did it again? Maybe our next board meet I think are we all together here in May? Yes, maybe mm -hmm. in May and, and did some more specific and I think that'd be great. I, I, really I guess I'm trying to figure out why I need to be an expert at this as far as what I saw, whether I had this in front of me or not. Mm -hmm. we've, been, we've shown all those posters, we've seen the student learning outcomes. So as I watched them, it was clear. <laughs> there was literacy, there was science. Those things were clear to me whether I had this in front of me or not. Mm -hmm. And. I'm, I, I don't think my calibration on this is rating the school. It's informing mm -hmm. me as to if somebody calls and says, you know, I don't really think they're learning a thing in that school. I could very easily say, have you looked at any of the teachers' websites? Have you, you know, the presentation? You might want to go on ORCA and see the presentation. What is your concern? I'm never going to get a phone call like that, I can just tell you. But, um, I don't think I would refer somebody to what I observed or how I saw it here, mm -hmm. but knowing those student learning outcomes, which we've had in our face every time we have a carousel meeting or um, on the websites, I think is more the informative part that's important to me versus understanding this rubric really well. Mm -hmm. Well, that sort of gets at the purpose of the board monitoring. Like, that's the why. Why are we doing mm -hmm. board monitoring? What drove us to, to develop the board monitoring guidelines and the form? Um, and I think it's just trying to quantify. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, this guy did Nobody's be, ever going to look at a form that we've done, but we can say we've done, we have formalized a little bit our, 
our monitoring role. And this is right. This is one of the things mm -hmm. that we do to sort of check that box. But if Ruben had a three next to global citizenship and I didn't, it's how we interpreted true. what they because I did true. turn it over for yeah. global citizen and saw it was civics and economics and geography, mm -hmm. world language. So I thought, okay, that was. Mm -hmm. But if I just saw the term global citizenship, mm -hmm. maybe I didn't see anything that I thought. But yet, if that's your social studies, your new term for social studies, which it is, mm -hmm. then I saw that. Mm -hmm. So I think because of what you just said, that's why it would be nice to do it together with, with you and just try to connect the dots. Because, you know, I've read this to Nanko many times, but I'm, I'm kind of a visual learner too. So seeing it together and having the time to discuss it with you guys, it would be. You know, maybe you make me see something that I'm not seeing, you know, because oh, we see things different, so we could learn from from each other, but that's just me. A snippet from an actual class mm -hmm. happening. I don't know if people would be comfortable with that or not, but oh, I'm, just sure. Gonna, I'm sure yeah. they would. Mm -hmm. And I had thought about that originally when we were going to do it last time, and I didn't have time to get kids together. Oh, I thought this um, was great. I'm not just saying we didn't like yeah. this, but no. this is a big deal for people to have to be out and be here. And but it's all, and it was good for them to see you, and mm -hmm. then, like this happens every month. Mm -hmm. That was one of the kids said, do you do this every Tuesday? I said, no, <laughs> we do that. Oh, I said, we meet once a month. <laughs> OK. But that awareness on yeah. their part, yeah. that's important for Well, when know. Stephen called us, I said, I think Stephen's trying to get the meeting going, so we're not here till midnight. He said, how will you do your meetings go? <laughs> I said, well. And that's when he asked me if we met every week. Any final thoughts? I think it's a good start. Yeah, it's great. And there's, there's so many other ways for you to to engage in this and without having 16 mm -hmm. kids come. But yeah, I think no, I would just. That was super cool to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was they were very proud. Of that. It was amazing. And they, they actually identified basically the only thing I asked it was. Um, do you have any students who would like to come to present to the board something around student learning outcomes? And they came up with, so these are all things that they have been working on in this, you know, within the last month or so. Um, but the, they identified, well, we'd like to do the poetry and we would like to share the green screen and we want to share. So th this is completely student designed. Would, would you relay our thanks back mm -hmm. to them all? Yes. Yeah. Because it's sort of, as everybody yes. wanted out, we didn't have sort of a place to. And there were a few who were really disappointed they weren't able to come who wanted to share. I would just wanted to add that, I mean, this part of, of the monitoring practice is a work in progress. So if it's not working for you, or if you want more information or less, then let us know. The most important thing is that, it, that you're monitoring the student mm -hmm. learning outcomes, which is awesome. And I think that. We're looking for ways above and beyond the data presentations, right, to actually right. put those student learning outcomes right there for you all to see the evidence. Um, and you know, having students come and share their work is probably the best way to do that. But um, just continue to give us feedback because we can both mm -hmm. tweak this as, as we want it to be useful for you mm -hmm. as well. I think you. about you know another opportunity to the, the robotics presentation that happened at the last meeting at U32, right? Another mm -hmm. great example of so many other SLOs that to see firsthand, you actually like, wow, this is what you're doing with these robots. Yes. Yeah. All righty. Move us on to 3.2 school safety, which we covered. The, no. no. I was just wondering if there was yes. any. Feedback on from the state specific to our school. No, you mean after they came, so they came to visit. Mm -mm, I've not heard anything, and I don't. I don't know that I will, or I'm not sure. I know they were collecting all the data. I'm assuming they're probably still visiting schools. Um, well, they've done 95 or 96 percent. I've seen the cumulative data. Mm -hmm. I just haven't not seen data specific to us. I mean, just anecdotally, while he was here, he said, you guys are in good shape. Mm -hmm. That that was kind of his blanket mm -hmm. statement, but so, I've not heard anything specific. 
I, I read the report that you sent us, and I, I did. I, I took some some notes, and some of it also said that you know it was confidential. So I don't know if when we talk about. I, I thought there were three things which you had talked about maybe uh, doing too. So the two extra cameras, the outdoor speakers, I, which I didn't was aware of, mm -hmm. but that could be a good idea. So there's some things that should we wait for that state report, or some things that we might want to do now. And then the other question I had, because I didn't know this, uh, do we now have a strong public safety presence at the, at the meetings? Because that was the other thing that he was suggesting that we needed to have to, to so that it was a public safety team instead of a public, instead of a safety, what is that we call it at Washington oh. Central? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what you're talking about. So that, the, um, uh, so state police and the firemen were, had more presence here so that the kids were more familiar with them, so mm -hmm. that if they came mm -hmm. 100 times, and then if some of those members were part of your safety, no. okay. safety okay. Yes. team, no. it would be a safe. So that was one of the requirements. Yeah. So I was wondering where we are with that, that because that seems like an easy one, that if we incorporated them into the planning at Washington Central for... Yeah. For, for everybody, so, that would be a first easy step. The leadership team talked briefly about this today, and we one of the next steps that we are going to take. Um, so Amy Molina at U32 kind of is spearheading a lot of this work, and she's done a lot of the work around school safety. Um, she a next step is she's going to meet with the elementary building principals, and we're going to kind of review just our procedures and compare that because one of the things that we talked about is having consistency across all schools, consistency between elementary and middle and high so that the language is the same, the expectations are the same. So that's all coming next. Um, the Thinking about what you had mentioned, shortly after this building um, was built, and I'm guessing it's just because the fire department was here so mm -hmm. much during construction, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that they, uh, we had a pretty close relationship with them for a few years, where they came, they did presentations with kids, they dressed up, they made it a really fun event. Um, we haven't done that in a couple of years, and um, when they when come they in come. and we do other things around the holidays with them, and kids see them come to pick up gift baskets or do different things, but. It's not something that we have really formalized. It's tricky, We've, um, especially because being out here, we only have the state police. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, the local fire department is very easy. We invite them to the our I love east, and they come in, and they have lunch with the kids. But you never know for the state police, right? Who you, There is no local. So it's, it's a little bit harder for us to have a relationship. Um, like when I was teaching in Montpelier, we just we knew who they were. They were in our buildings. Mm -hmm. All the kids knew them. It looks a little bit different out here. So we haven't done a lot around that. Okay. So will you mention to Amy about maybe bringing them into the table? So apparently we yeah. form a public safety team. That's yeah. the only. Right. I think that is more in cities or towns that have a police department right. who they're or the same people. Officer. Where mm -hmm. ours switch all the time depending on who's mm -hmm. in this week or this. Right. Because it's just a contract with the sheriff's department or the state police. Right. But we we'll definitely have fire that with the fire department. Yeah, so with the fire chief, yeah. that would be easy. It's see. relatively consistent on the state police. Mm -hmm. It's. Meaning, I mean, yeah, <laughs> there's not them. Wait, got pulled over and it was the same person. <laughs> <laughs> well, we now have a sheriff that lives out here and a state police that lives out by us. So I do see them, but they don't necessarily patrol this neighborhood. Right. Well, and it was my impression from the state report, it's, it was less about having them in the school for the students to see. Yeah. And more having them on the team to and have the team expertise. To know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so and that was could one of the in. things that um, when Officer Brown came to interview me about our procedures, um, you know, he, those are, they had an intern, sorry, an intern from Norwich who was working with the state police who came to interview me much earlier this year, long before this kind of became such a hot topic. And, um, so they do have, like the state police does have our 
the building mm -hmm. layout mm -hmm. and the door plan and the I mean the escape plan and you know they do have all of that and there that was one thing that this um, Norwich um, intern that was his project was to go through all of the Middlesex barracks um, you know their geographical area and make sure to get all of the school's information so that could be updated and that did happen mm -hmm. this year um, which is a it hadn't happened in mm. my time here before that. So that was, I think that they are trying to get, have more of a presence or at least an understanding of what, how we operate. Mm -hmm. I think if it, I would encourage that it become, at least in the near term, year or two, a, a, like a, um, a standard, to, item on leadership team agenda mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just so that it's it's one of, I think it's one of it should become one of those things that you know so we talk about school board monitoring mm -hmm. that's something that we should monitor mm -hmm. right uh, you know this camera is broken okay and now it's a year later and that camera is still broken mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. you know didn't you understand us 12 months ago Alicia when we said we want that <laughs> camera fixed and it's not fit. Yeah. I, you know, I'm just being facetious, but um, I think that for boards, it would be something I'll mention at the executive committee mm -hmm. tomorrow. Yeah. Until we're comfortable, mm -hmm. which we should never be, but at least I'm comfortable. Not being reactive, I think, is important. Yeah. Which is yeah. a little bit no, of what the, has there. happened. Yeah. I think we're really everything. You know, majority of what we do is geared to what happens if, right. as compared to how do we prevent this, right. mm -hmm. and to be more preventive. Okay. Yeah. okay. On to reports to the board, administration. Questions, comments, feedback. Can I just go with mine? Yeah, you start with yeah, because so grading and reporting mm -hmm. the last bullet on the oh, yeah. survey. Yeah. Do you have that? Could you could you give me a summary of that tomorrow? Tomorrow. By tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so I we haven't looked at it as a staff yet, but I absolutely have like the a general You know, summary. a few bullet points mm -hmm. on it. It's just, <clears throat> this is a topic of discussion at the executive committee meeting tomorrow. Oh, sure. So I would um, like to have, s just whatever you think, just some 70 or 80, however many parents responded. 82 and now. These were the Which top, these were the top two or three takeaways. Yep. That's all. I don't, it's just five minutes worth of your work. If it takes more than that, then don't do it. I'm happy to do that. Um, <coughs> let me just tell you just really briefly, because this is, so we are, we are at the end of the year, this really is geared towards um, changing practices for next year. Um, and my hope was to have this be some baseline data for us around how parents are feeling we communicate and different types of communication. But I'll just kind of, there, there are only a very few questions. Um, but the information was, um, their, their current grade level of their child, the teacher's name. And the reason I ask for teacher's names is I actually have a stack for each teacher of individual responses so they can get personal feedback, which I think is going to be important. Mm -hmm. um, but I have school-wide information that I can share with you. Yeah, that that's all I would be interested um, in. But it's just about the frequency of communication from the classroom's teacher, the classroom teacher, whether or not they read that. Um, whether or not they access the website, and then what types of information they look for on the website, um, whether or not they read the school-wide newsletter and Blackboard emails, and what information is most valuable to them as a parent. And there was a whole list that it was just check boxes. And then there, the last question was, um, what would be helpful to have more communication around from either the school or your child's teacher so that we could get feedback? Part of this is, um, so looking ahead to next one is we need to be more consistent as a school in our communication. We have some teachers who share communicate every single day. We have some weekly. We have some, you know, mm -hmm. as frequent as monthly. Um, and then the other piece is what is it that parents want to know? And then also thinking about opening up the Infinite Campus 
parent portal next year. So there's that information, right, that parents are going to see. And then there's this other kind of, you know, what do parents love the pictures and they love to know what the upcoming events are and they love the school menu. And, you know, so we really wanted to know what, what is most helpful. Um, we got some really specific feedback though. So I'm happy to. And like I said, just. Yeah, that's it. it we'll it's going to be on. one of the three focus points of the Washington, of the entire board. Okay. Is, uh, communication, community engagement. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very appropriate. Sorry if I continue mm -hmm. asking mm -hmm. questions. Um, what's the maximum class size of a pre K can be? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> Two different numbers, I'll tell you. The 18. room can take 18. We had up to 18 last, last school year, not this year, and it was too many for the staff. We've capped it at 16. Okay. Um, I, I'm not suggesting 14 is too small. It's just that- 28 is too big. <laughs> oh, for, no, no, no. I, 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 think, I think 14 is, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with that yeah. class size. But you say we have more coming, yeah. so I'm conscious budget-wise. If it's if there's, you know, three or four more coming, and that's okay. Yeah. And if there's twenty coming, th that's okay because we hired another teacher. It financially makes sense. But if right. there's eight coming, what do we do? And we've had that. We've had a wait list. So we'll cap it at sixteen. That's what we did this year, and it definitely <clears throat> felt much more. Uh, I have to say, safe and doable. Mm -hmm. Um, there are uh, more coming by the ones and twos, not dozens. Not enough for another class yet. And the new hire is a point four. The new hire is a point four. It got posted officially mm -hmm. yesterday. It was a little weird in the wording. Is the person only working Tuesday and Tuesday? So right now we have two. two. It's we have had an amazing setup that mm -hmm. has worked but it's no longer going to work. So that person works all day Monday and Tuesday so they have a morning session afternoon? No, it's it's one session so it's ten. So we have, the way that it's worked now is we have two staff. Mm -hmm. We have Jamie O'Hare mm -hmm. and then we have Beth Downing. So Beth is here on Mondays and Tuesdays for one of our 10 hour sessions. Okay. And then she works at Callis the other three days right. and Jamie comes in and does the other 10 hour session. So we have two classes in the same room over five days. Right. So we have a two-day session and a three-day session. Okay. The tricky thing, it, it worked beautifully because it worked for Beth and it worked for us, um, but now Callis has so many new kids, which is awesome that for was them. Great. Um, they need to have two sessions and we still need to have two sessions. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a point where we do have a number, so I posted it yesterday and there are a number of applicants already. We're hoping to interview next week, so that's good. I didn't know if we would get much. I would think that'd be attractive to somebody yeah. who wants mm -hmm. a part-time job. Yeah. Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> right. It yeah. works. It's yeah. worked with you. <laughs> I know. I think I can see somebody really. I just, I was still thinking it was one of those where one teacher did morning sessions no. and one did no. afternoon mm -hmm. sessions. So they're there. It's a longer day, mm -hmm. but it's just one set of kids per day in that room. Mm -hmm. And I had one more question, but it's mm -hmm. primarily for the board, but the administrators are welcome. But uh, on the bottom of page five, spring hirings, the first bullet, um, one of the topics for discussion at the executive committee tomorrow night is special educator hiring process. <coughs> so I didn't know if, if, any, if any if anyone was uncomfortable with the process. To, we go through so Alicia, I think Kelly's. Mm -hmm. There's a, a group of administrators and of teachers, us. or there's a group. Yes. Mm -hmm. So for for special educators in this school, Alicia's on the the interview team. They make a recommendation to the executive committee, and we either you know we hire the person or we don't hire the person because special ed is hired at the as, so. There's, there's going to be some discussion on is that the way we want to do it? Are we comfortable with that? So I just, uh, knowing that that's a topic, uh, are we comfortable the way 
it's working for us here. Can I explain the yeah. process? It's because yeah. it's a little bit more than that. Okay. Um, so we had two kind of two levels of interviewing. The the first, so we had four open positions for special educators across the supervisory union, um, and we agreed that it would make more sense to kind of do it all as one mm -hmm. rather than having all these separate um, committees happening. So. There was a representative from each school who had an opening, and we did the first round of interviews. So we kind of just like, is this person a, would they be a good candidate for one of our schools? Yes or no, basically. Um, and then we offered the teachers to tell us, you know, so some are geared toward middle and high school. Of course, we're not gonna have them work here, right, or vice versa. Then there was a second round of interviews that happened at the individual schools, and that's when so Sheila Patterson, one of my special ed special educators, and I participated in that first round of kind of just vetting. And then we brought back the candidates that we felt would be good matches for the elementary school into our buildings. And then we had like a parent, a teacher, a para, you know, more of a representative, and we dug a little bit deeper. So we did second round interviews that way. Um, and then it was the individual schools who made the recommendation for hire of these four special educators That's so great. it kind of it was two That's steps great. first the initial you know is this person qualified and licensed and should they be in one of our schools and then there was the deeper did you feel like that was a good robust process yes it, it is a little tricky um and we worked it out but say you have two great candidates in four positions and how are you going to fight for them? <laughs> who gets them right mm -hmm. and we had agreed this time around that really the candidate needs to want to be in the school right so if one example is we had a candidate coming from burlington and really didn't want to go to one of the off the beaten path schools and only wanted to go to berlin because for mm -hmm. her that commute was doable mm -hmm. and we honored that and said you know of course and so she only did a second interview at berlin so those kind of details we had to work out mm -hmm. special educators are hard to find mm -hmm. and so and we had a lot of openings and that um i still think there are openings actually. there's a lot of openings <laughs> um but i did feel like that was a, a good building process so the discussion okay. will be around boards making the decision and admin, not administrators making the decision that the board should be involved with the interview. Each individual board? Each individual board should, the special should make the decision on special educators that get referred to the executive, the executive committee. The executive committee no. is made up of representatives from every board. So I'm, I'm just, no, I, 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 we're comfortable with the yeah, way yeah, we're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. it, or the way yeah, it's I, being done. I am, but I, I just wanted to. Yeah. Yes, okay. yeah, I and think I think it, one of the points that Alicia made that's important to me even though the person is from the central office level, having them visit the school and be interviewed knowing that I feel comfortable in this school or, yeah, the school just, like I don't that. want somebody yeah. telling me I have to be in. Now down the road, if an opening, like this school's population goes down, mm -hmm. that person should have the right to go to the other school if that's the way we're doing it from a central office, whether and they don't have to, they can always go get another job. But I think that part was important to me that it not be just right. Bill and Kelly and maybe Jen making a decision and allotting people. So I, but I think it would no. These people go through enough interviews. Yeah. If you you know if you let you know who I think you're alluding to, if you let them know that other, because I didn't even know about that other part, I was comfortable the way I was, but that, that again, sort of honors that it's going to be the CEO of that building is who's, uh, you know, we, as mm -hmm. a board member, I'm not going to be working with that person. It should be the chemistry that works for mm -hmm. that well, we're, we're comfortable school. So I think, yes. 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 Right, the I other, that's, the other thing you. I like about the way it is, it allows us, from my, when I was chair, from that perspective, it allowed our SU to be nimble. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so move faster. It, it yeah. didn't, it, you didn't add a month or two to right. the process, and by then yeah. the person's not available People get anymore. grabbed yes. up yes. fast. Yeah, I yes. can't see yeah. an upside it's of a small enough world where mm -hmm. if three administrators go, oh my yeah. God, you know, 
Sue Jones is available. Can you believe it? I don't know what happened, but yeah. let's let's jump right away and see if she's interested in this. I, I, I don't know if that's exactly how it goes, but I would anticipate it there's. It can happen that way. Yeah. Okay, it's that's all I needed. I just wanted. Small state. <laughs> I just wanted some specific feedback when it comes up. Yeah. I apologize for hijacking your report. No. Oh, no. Yeah. I, I had one question on the report, and I, it just might be that I read it wrong, but I just read it again from my little notes. So it, is it Michael Sherwood will be our part-time behavioral coach? <laughs> no. So he, well, and he's, part-time. He's gonna yes, he's going to continue what he's doing. Done. Oh, so oh, he's oh, part-time behavior interventionist and part-time okay. behavior. So part of his world is kids, a very yeah. big part. And another part of his world is helping build capacity with the adults in the building, right? Like by going into classrooms, yeah. by modeling, by helping build systems for kids, by coaching teachers around behavior in the classroom. So, um, and that's that's all what he yeah. does anyway. Yes. Yeah, and that's and that's fine. I didn't know how to read. Even when I went down below, it's a part-time behavioral intervention, part-time behavioral coach. I didn't know if it was the same, and suddenly we were losing him to part-time. No. So I was. So yeah, part of. <laughs> I, I won't ever say like 50% because it really depends on the day. It could be 110% of his day is kids. Um, or it could be, you know, 40% on a day. So it's kids always come first. Interventions always happen because kids are there. Um, and then, then he's also working to build capacity with our teachers. Great. So I made a note on that too, and I didn't say anything because I'd said so many things. Oh, oh, um, okay. But yeah, I, agree I was with just the floor. Maybe this. it could be. It's the language. Is the language? It was to a little me, confusing. To me, it said um, Michael Sherman, uh, and it doesn't have to be this wording, but is is primarily a behavioral interventionist, and as time permits, he he does behavioral coaching. Mm -hmm. But isn't that Cause, the cause same? Because when I saw it, 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 it like, oh, we only need yeah. a part time. Behavioral interventions, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Or maybe so, just see the, maybe see the, the separate. See I don't know. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, I, I, so I think if it's a he's he's, a, he's primarily doing behavioral interventions. He's doing that's, behavior all day, 100. Well, that's what I want to get <laughs> across. I don't want somebody to think that suddenly we have extra. Or yeah. there's no stuff, you know, like, <laughs> right. yeah, or no, money. But I agree for <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah. oh, he doesn't have enough to do now, mm -hmm. so we're going to have him do some behavioral coaching. Mm -hmm. And that's not right. what the reality is, and that's not what we want to ex right. express. He does behavioral coaching when he can fit it in. Well, it's not even no, that. So it, part of it might be um, just thinking about it's been a number of years since he's been in this position and since we really talked about it. but. Like a lot of what he does is working with classroom teachers around behavior, whether it's tier one, you know, all kids' behavior and just setting up systems for behavior, or it's kids who need special, like check in, check out interventions, or it's, you know, going hands on with kids. Um, but he, it kind of runs the gamut. But a lot of what, a lot of his day is in classrooms supporting teachers to support kids because there's one Michael and he cannot be in every classroom, you know, all day long. We have to build that capacity with teachers. So if you know whether it's putting a little, you know, quiet space for a child who needs that in a classroom and helping a teacher design that and checking in with the student around it, or it's, you know, whatever it is. Um, so I, but I do understand it's it's all around interventions, but it's or Michael no, Sherman is a beha is behavior interventionist in just take out the part time coach. on the top slash coach and, and, and coach. the only people I've ever seen done. this are you. So no, 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 okay, okay. But oh, all right. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, and there's coaches everywhere in here. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I got confused. I totally understand now. He is full time doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's a learning opportunity for you as an administrator. Yeah. How do you use language? <laughs> I'll make sure not to put that in the newsletter. As a board observation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on to the fiscal report. Weakness. So we're really, I'm just looking, there, nothing has changed in the last few months that you've seen this. We have... As teach, so we're closing down accounts for the year. 
we've asked teachers right before April break to start wrapping up. Um, you're going to see in May and then um, definitely after June the close down of the year. But um, there's nothing that. Nothing unusual? No. No, nothing that stands out. Executive committee. No, I have a question on this. On the financial. Oh, go oh ahead. sorry. I guess I was just, I must have had extra time at work this week. Um, <laughs> I just, I said this is my weakness. <laughs> it feels like it's Friday. I'm spending that time on time that part. To work. Um, Not anything right away, but we, that really good, we just got that spreadsheet last board meeting on the, on the um, planned uh, replacement mm -hmm. capital oh, yes, plan. Yes, um, yes. It, it, <clears throat> excuse me. If we could tie the projected available funds to that, because what struck me, I looked at the number and I'm like, oh, that's great work, this great number. But the reality is, all kinds of that number is already spent, right? What number well, are you I mean, the projected available funds? Really projected of, available funds for capital improvement, which is almost 700,000 now. Based on the capital plan. Right. So if that, if those funds can be tied to the capital plan, so that even though all that money's in there, we know a hundred thousand of it's for a roof in ten years, and fifty thousand of it, I don't know, is to replace windows in five years. So it's not this big lump sum there. It's, right. it's. it's it, I think what you were alluding to, the money's not really there. It's just earmarked, earmarked for something in the future. It would be it would be useful for me to be able to mm -hmm. see what it's earmarked mm -hmm. for, and I think it would be good for you know if a community member comes in and yep. says, "Wow, you got all that money," you know, or, you know how break. come it doesn't tax break or those kind of things? We can say, "Well, it is there, and this is why it's there." Mm -hmm. So in five years, we don't need a five hundred thousand dollar bond because a hundred of it's going here. And, you know, two fifties going here and that kind of thing. I think that's a really yeah, good suggestion. Good yeah. Yeah. It's, it's effectively drawn down to there's eighty thousand dollars that's like unallocated out of that seven hundred thousand. Well, and it helps inform it helps, it helps inform us when we're adding money each year, or if we are going to add money. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we see we've got this much and we're only projected to use. Five hundred thousand over ten years, mm -hmm. then you know maybe we're not adding fifty or sixty a year, mm -hmm. or conversely we see, oh geez, here's an un unexpected cost. You know m maybe we add a little more this year than we might normally add for a year or two to bulk it up in anticipation of that need. Yeah, and I think it might be. I agree with you, Stephen. I think it might be a little hard to pinpoint each exact cost because the costs are going to change depending on the year that that is done. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could uh, allocate. An estimate, or yeah, or we maybe we could allocate percentages because, like, I could see this year probably investing quite a bit of money into safety that we might thought we were not going to use right now. So, like, saying, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, forty percent is mechanic. It, there's going to be 15 percent of this that is going to be a well, furniture it, it, you know I'm I just think it's earmarking but I don't think it's prescriptive right yeah right, right. Yeah. it's anticipated it's not, that we will use need it for something else right. if something comes up but yeah. this is why we have put this money aside right. it's not yeah. just for fun so is that spreadsheet on the is that called deferred maintenance anyway the projected the capital plan. Capital plan. Yeah. That e I don't care if it's a percentage or an yeah, because I think it'll be easier to ear market typically a percentage. Typically, we anticipate we it's going to cost this much or whatever. Trying to get estimates it, it, from it, everybody right it, now would it, be a lot of work. It adds value to that. No, thing. not as yeah, that not just the number. Saying, just yep. a yeah. round number. Right, but we but we do have the numbers for what all of the things cost and their projected right. lifespan. So right. Yeah. So that's what I. Right. There's. Yeah. You can break that, that was down in that yes. yeah. the, Those two pieces of information oh, are going to come out of there. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. the, the cost new mm -hmm. and the lifespan. Mm -hmm. right. So then you put it oh. on the plate or on it, it's going to cost <laughs> the next time. Um, yeah. Okay. 
Well, I'm thinking that will be a summer project, but yes, I yeah. can get yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying, the amount of time that... <laughs> tomorrow. Just, <laughs> like the, the <laughs> just one other thing. Um, I can help with that. The uh, actual expense here to date, I think we were going to remove the word freezer from there because it didn't actually yeah. come from... Yep. You are right. And I know it got into the notes because I saw it. Yes. Okay. it so um, I'll make sure. That's a Lori piece. Okay. Now I'm going to be talking with you. Oh, you still remember? <laughs> well, um, so you've heard more about what's on the agenda for tomorrow night. We're going to talk about the board goals. So the three goals that came out of the last full board meeting, uh, communication, board monitoring, I forget the third one, but the executive committee was tasked with putting some meat to that before the full board meeting. So we're talking about those three. Um, the hiring for special educators is on the agenda. A retreat is on the agenda. I think that's most of what's being dealt with tomorrow night, so I'll have some more feedback after. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last executive one was just more of a reorganization. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will share that Matt called me today um, just to express his regret. He was hoping to make it, but he had a, a, another commitment. Mm -hmm. um, and relayed the talking points that Steve just relayed. So he was feeling like I don't know what he was feeling. I think he was feeling like he was uh, like he wanted to be here but couldn't and didn't want us to feel sort of in the cold. No, no. Because he's going to meet other meetings that he didn't make this one. So. No. Uh, I don't think that's the expectation he goes to. No, he no. No, I I don't feel that way at all. Um, and I don't think that's his intent to make it to every school board crazy. meeting in yeah. the district either. But yeah. I think he was, you know, there's some of this work around the board goals and stuff that he wanted to flesh out a little bit. So, um, so I just wanted to relay that I had had that conversation with him. Thank you. Policy committee? We didn't meet. Easy enough. <laughs> um, <clears throat> action agenda. Okay. Um, can I just share, I share something uh, yeah. from we we did Stephen and I both attended the the community engagement uh, retreat or you know, just uh, that Saturday before before vacation and we we have some stuff that we could share at another meeting with you with you guys but like he said it's part of the focus of the executive committee so it would be great. Uh, to have allocate some time maybe at our next meeting to talk about what what we would like to do and propose that was a VSBA, to, that was a VSBA and it was from public agenda and it, it was very similar groups. to the other ones that three, I had attended three, but, three it was three. Presenting. but that's true so it was the VSBA and they, um, so Nicole uh, presented more about uh, how the law is involved in making sure that this public engagement stays within the open meeting law, and she gave some uh, good. Uh, Hopefully, they don't tips. think weird things about East Montpelier school board members. I'm sorry, guys, but <laughs> as is typical with me, I. Yeah, I was close enough to elbow him <laughs> right next to him. And no, I was thinking of that. Uh, the interactive thing. Oh, the yeah, we did, did some interactive where things. Where you could be closer to the bullseye or further away from the bullseye. Yeah. What was the first one? That there, there are some students in your school that don't feel safe either at school or at home. Right. So everyone was kind of floating, mm -hmm. and I went right mm -hmm. to the bullseye. Yeah. And everyone was like, so they said, why are you at the bullseye? And I said, well, I said later yes. to a smart group, I said, why wasn't everyone in the bullseye? Yeah. They said, some students in your school don't feel safe either at school or at home. Yeah. It would seem pretty reasonable to me that there would be one or two kids in 200 that don't but feel it, safe yeah. at school or at home. Yeah, and, but it was a great experiment, especially with community engagement, because once we were able to talk about, so some of us were close to the middle, Stephen was in the middle, and it happened in different questions. 
But then once they, the facilitator, which was a high school student that was been taught in facilitation, which was actually, actually really valuable to see. And also we talked about the possibility of having a student leadership person come to our meetings too, once in a while. It, he, once you asked them why they were there, there were people had to understand the question sometimes different to what we had understood the question, and they have valid points to where they were, or sometimes they hadn't understand the question, which also goes into how we not communicate really <laughs> clearly. But it was a good, um, it, it was a good in, introduction, and they talked a lot about things that Essex had done, and they, I created a little list that I shared with Stephen, and maybe we can talk about it at our next uh, meeting, and if there's another opportunity for anybody, they, they pretty much are running kind of the same um, presentation, so if it comes around again, it'll be helpful for mm -hmm. somebody else to be able to go. I'll go if I get the elbow, Stephen. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Like he was good. He was good. No. <laughs> no, he was he was really good. Yeah. Okay. Are we on to the action agenda? Mm -hmm. Text. No. No, oh, that's great. Um, approved transfer capital fund. I thought it was going to be like the doors. There was nothing in there. Transfer from the capital funds that we may be from the from capital for the no we should no usually is when we have funds left from the previous year that we was it just left on there from the really old agenda I really don't know what it is and I've just been looking at the last three months minutes to try to figure I out what I that's there I don't okay. know so I'm gonna so make we're this gonna easy nobody knows what the heck this table. is so we're just gonna. We can take no action on that. Nope. <laughs> um, approve hire of classroom teacher. So um, we wrapped up mm -hmm. a. Um, I have to say, this is probably the. We had over 80 applicants for the first grade position, which in my time here, that's the most applicants we've had for any position. It was. Uh, really hard. <laughs> we had a lot, uh, such a range of candidates from not graduated from college yet, just about to get, you know, first year in their career, to those who have been teaching for many, many years. Um, we interviewed a lot. I feel like we interviewed nine um, because it was just so hard. And I kept thinking the whole time looking on School Spring, am I missing someone on there who's like amazing? Because there was just so much to read through. But um, we invited three back to do a demonstration lesson, second round interviews, um, all incredible candidates. We, we deliberated for a long time <laughs> over this one. Um, and in the end, we, uh, selected the person we felt like would be the best match for this school. Um, very excited. She met with Bill yesterday, um, and I would like to recommend her name is Jessica Pakura. <laughs> <laughs> I knew she wasn't available when we called her back. Um, other schools wanted her as well. Um, so I, I bring her to um, recommend her for hire for our first grade classroom teacher position. I highly recommend her. Very highly. And Lindy also interviewed her mm -hmm. at her school for a oh, position. Mm -hmm. oh. And the principal, when I called for the reference, said, well, I know she's being observed tomorrow by East Montpelier. I was like, yes, I'm thinking her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think she was a finalist in more than one place, but I'm sure she, she chose us. So what's yes. the her part? Do you want What's what? What's her part? Like in your mind? Oh gosh! So mind. she actually is. She is only a one year in teacher. She graduated from UVM last May, and her principal described her as a um, first year teacher who really looks like a fifth year teacher. She has incredible, incredible classroom management. She has been teaching, um, which is really hard. You know, eighteen students in a one-two classroom. Um, she has taught them everything. So she's had to teach first and second grade math, literacy, um, and everything in a mixed grade. She's figured out how to make it work in one year pretty quickly. 
Um, and also in her year, in her first year, she was able to really um, quickly identify areas of growth, what she wants to work on, why she wants to be here, um, and they were all, she was very genuine about mm -hmm. honest, honest and genuine, like, yep, in the fall, I felt like I needed to learn a little bit more about literacy, I didn't get all that I needed at UVM, and so she took a class, worked with the literacy coach there, um, the second semester, she took a course in math at St. Mike's, and is, I'm, she's a lifelong learner, and she's only, like, what, maybe 23? <laughs> you know, doing this for not, not very long at all, but um, came across as incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. um, and very, very highly recommended from her colleagues and her supervisor. So, mm -hmm. was, uh, it, yeah, it was a long process and it was, re it was a really hard one. Mm -hmm. She went up against some very strong veteran teachers that... There's um, some good people up there right now. There are some mm -hmm. great people. Is it so flooded because of, like, cutbacks or...? Her situation, where she is, um, she had, she was ripped. Okay. Budget cuts. Their budget still hasn't passed in the school that she's in. And it's tiny. The school is tiny. Um, but all different reasons, really. Mm -hmm. Well, and do I, we yeah. still draw a lot from out of state as well? There were a lot from out of state. Mm -hmm. And a lot of about to graduate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is great. <laughs> I'm sure there's, I'm sure of those 82, there are many promising teachers in that pool. Yeah, so maybe. I would make a motion that we approve the principal's recommendation I, for yes. classroom teacher hire. And here's, sorry, there's copies. I second it. Okay. <laughs> Is there any further discussion of the potential hire? No, just thank you for doing it. Yes. Yeah, indeed, that's, that's she also has special ed certification. That's, thank you. I just that remembered. She was the only one. Yes, that did come to the top. Thank you. She was the only candidate who's dual certified in, reg in elementary ed and special ed, which is a, a big major bonus for us. She will be our first classroom teacher here who is a license, license in special ed. Did she tell you? F E C U R. Yep. F E C U R A. Thank you. Did she tell you she has an identical twin? No. You learn more about her. Than well, I did. it came up in our interview because her identical twin is also a teacher. Oh. And some people from her school were going to a conference, and she knew her sister was going to be there, <laughs> and she couldn't decide whether to tell them or not tell them. <laughs> And uh, then the principal told me the same story when I talked to him, because he said, I was sitting there, and luckily she had told me, because it was really eerie. Wow. <laughs> but they are identical twins. <laughs> and um, James's son had a situation where he dated somebody who he's married to now. At UVM, she didn't tell him she had an identical twin. And he had had his first date and thought it went great. And the next day, saw her on campus and said, "Hey!" And she was, <laughs> didn't say, "Hey, back." <laughs> so oh we had an gosh. identical twin little story in our meeting or our so interview. Funny. But she just seemed like a great match. Yeah, we're very excited. Yeah. All righty. All yeah. those in favor of hiring Jessica Takura, please say aye. 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 Opposed to abstain. Mm. And hopefully at the May meeting I'll bring a pre-K teacher for you. What do you need? Board order. Oh, I sent it. It went, that, it went that way. I have it that way. 17 something. Mm. Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the board orders for $17,223.50. I'll second it. <coughs> Any discussion of the board order? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Sorry. Excellent. What did we do? We did that one, Bill. Oh, you weren't here. Okay. That's yeah, we, we did that when uh, Bill had to leave. Yeah. So he was here. You're funding the, the, the salary increase for the non bargaining employees. Two point six percent for some and three point five for the others. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.
<laughs> no problem. Okay. Uh, that brings us to uh, future agenda items, which I've added the VSBA community engagement. Okay. Um, anything else? We planned in the summer, there's usually a retreat. Has that hasn't happened? Okay. We have enough time. That probably should be a future yeah. board because everybody's calendars get mm -hmm. filled up. Yeah, so we probably should visit the board calendar again. Yeah. Next meeting. Next meeting. Okay. Board communication. Anything to put under there? That brings us to a job. Early. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Jen, we should have come up with some stuff to try to put you on <laughs> you the You know spot. what? The, no, no worries. The student presentation does. Or Bill Lowe, he instructed me to go easy on school seat stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I don't have any specific things. Thank you all. Thank you. Those were excellent.